dive right in. Uh, I, I dedicate this reading tonight uh, to those who continue to read, write, illuminate, sing, and recite the prophetic work of visionary William Blake. And, and uh, there are some artists in the, in the crowd tonight. And I, uh, this, is a, this, is a, this, e this whole evening is a fleet for joining words and pictures. And it's taken me a long time to, to do that in, in my work. But, but, uh, and there are, I understand the boundaries of poetry. Uh, with the boundaries with music, the boundaries with art. But uh, sometimes it's good to wander outside your boundaries. As <laughs> proof, proof, Blake is the proof of that. So, uh, the way to live Blake's prophetic work presented itself to me in several ways, mostly through Ginsburg's work. Allen Ginsberg wrote poems in the manner of Blake. They're dotted through his collected works. And later, he set those poems to music, and also set the Blake to music, uh, in, the, in the 90s especially. Ginsberg added visual elements in his selected poems with, with the help of an artist. And that selected poems is my favorite Ginsberg. And that's what one I'll read from tonight. Uh, seems to me there are there are no clunkers in this book, uh, uh, and, and uh, he was very good in the collective works of, but but uh, but there are poems that are not as strong. Uh, finally, perhaps most importantly, Ginsberg added breath stops to his recitations of Blake, and through these recitations. He finally embodied the prophetic works in his own poems. Uh, 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 I'm now going to dive right into Blake. And, and uh, a poem with uh, a poem at the end of the Songs of Innocence. Uh, which later got moved to the songs of experience is, is called a dream. And, uh, Once a dream did weave a shade o'er my angel guarded bed that an emmet lost its way where on grass me thought I lay troubled, wilder, and forlorn dark, benighted, travel-worn, over many a tangled spray, all heartbroke, I heard her say, O oh, my children, do they cry? Do they hear their father sigh? Now they look abroad to see, now return and weep for me, pitying I dropped a tear, but I saw a glowworm near who replied, What wailing wight calls the watchman of the night? I am set to light the ground while the beetle goes his round. Follow now the beetle's hum, little wanderer, hide thee home. <coughs> And, and uh, I, I never saw the plates of Blake while I was learning Blake until I, until I came to Grolier in 1987 and bought, the, and bought David Erdman Illuminated Blake, which I think unfortunately is out of print. But that's my text tonight. That's what I'm using. And what's really interesting is Blake made a spelling mistake in his plate. He, 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 he was saying beetle, and then he corrected it to beetle. He wanted the human, the, the, the human intervention. And, and the, the glowworm uh, is the one that leads the, chi the child home. Would you 
agree with that. Yes, yes. And I, I love this poem. It reminds me of Frost's uh, uh, butterfly poems, a, a tuft of flowers, with a, with a bit of where the butterfly reminds uh, us of our humanity. Uh, the the, uh, the poem got moved, I said, to the songs of experience because uh, uh, it, it, it strikes a lot of people as very sad. Uh, so uh, from there, I want to move to, uh, to the, the Blake poem that you all know, and did these feed in ancient time? Uh, the, the, which, which appears, you may not know that it appears at the, at the preface to the Milton, to Blake's Milton, one of his first prophetic books, and uh, essentially a, a rewrite of Milton for Blake's purposes. And I'll read it in its context in the preface page, and then I'll read a couple of, of uh, Poems, a, a couple of, of, of words from the, from the, uh, from the Milton. The stolen and perverted writings of Homer and Ovid, of Plato and Cicero, which all men ought to condemn, are set up by artifice against the sublime of the Bible. But uh, where the where where the new age is, at 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 leisure, work, at leisure to pronounce, all will be said right. And those grand works at, at the more ancient and conspicuously uh, pro, pro, professed inspired men will hold their proper rank. And did those feet in ancient time walk upon England's mountains green, and was the holy lamb of God on England's pleasant pasture seen, and did the countenance divine shine forth upon our clouded hills, and was Jerusalem builded here among these dark satanic mills? Bring me my bow of burning gold, bring me my arrows of desire, Bring me my spear, O clouds unfold. Bring me my chariot of fire. I will not cease from mental flight, nor shall my sword sleep in my hand till we have built Jerusalem in England's green and pleasant land. And then, would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets. There begins the prophetic work right there. And Blake, Ginsburg, like Blake, uh, tried to look at what was around them and make a better, uh, a, a vision of a better, of a better world. Uh, uh, now, I'm, now I'll move to, to the Jerusalem, his emanation of the giant of Albion, and and uh, there he gets wound up with the prophecy. <laughs> to the public, after three years of slumber on the banks of the ocean, I again display my giant forms to the public, my former giants and furies highly received have received the highest reward possible, and those with whom to be connected, I cannot doubt that this more consolidated and extended work will be as kindly received. The enthusiasm of, of the following poem, the author hopes, I also hope the reader will be with me, Holy One. And then, and then he uh, he goes into a fascinating uh, uh, rant on uh, we who dwell on earth 
can do nothing ourselves. Everything is conducted by spirits, no less than digestion or sleep. And of course, most of these poems come to him in sleep. When this verse was first dictated to me, I considered a monotonous cadence like that used by Milton and Shakespeare and all the writers of English blank verse derived from modern, the modern bondage of rhyming to be a necessary and indispensable part of verse. But I soon found that, that, that in, the, in, the, in, the, in the mouth of a true orator, such monotony was not only awkward, but as much a bondage as rhyme itself. I therefore have produced a variety in every line, both of cadences and of number, and of, and, and of number of syllables. Every word and every letter is studied and put into its place. The terrific numbers are reserved for the terrific parts, the mild and gentle for the mild and gentle parts, the prosaic for inferior parts. All are necessary to nations, to, to, to each other. Poetry fettered, fetters the human race. Nations are destroyed or flourish in proportion to their poetry, painting, and music, are destroyed or flourish. The primeval state of man was wisdom, art, and science. So there. <laughs> A good rallying cry for the Grolier. <laughs> and here's a bit from the first, from chapter one of the, of the Jerusalem. Chapter one of sleep of Ulro and the and the, the passage through eternal death and of the waking of eternal life. This theme calls me in sleep night after night, and every morn awakes me at sunrise. Then I see the Savior over me spreading his beams of love and dictating the words of this mild song. Awake, awake, O sleeper of the land of shadows. Wake, expand. I am in you and you in me, in mutual in love divine. Fibers of love from man to man through Albion's pleasant land. In all the dark Atlantic vale down from the hills of Surrey, a black water accumulates. Return, all beyond return. Thy brethren call thee, and thy fathers and thy sons, thy nurses and thy mothers, thy sisters and daughters, thy emanation that went to play before thy face. Where thou hast hidden thy emanation, lovely Jerusalem, from the vision and the fruition of the Holy One. I am not a guard afar off, I am a brother and a friend. Within your bosoms I reside, and you reside in me. Lo, we are one, forgiving all evil, not, seething, not seeking recompense. Ye are my members, O ye sleepers of Beola, land of shades. And uh, it, uh, we're in it, uh, and and uh, from 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 there, I want to uh, change keys a little bit to back to the Blake sunflower, because I think you could hear in these uneven measures, you could hear the the, pro the prophetic voice rising. But I think you can also hear it in the early songs of innocence, which we all know better. And uh, I'm, I'm going to try to recreate Ginsburg's reading of this poem, the, sun, the brief sunflower, and then read his own. Uh, to do that, I've got a, I've got a little uh, a diversion. <laughs> the way Ginsburg had a diversion, many of you remember in the late 90s, he remembered his, his portable harmonium. My brother-in-law tried to get me a portable harmonium, but they brought a full-size one. So 
I settled for my father's squeeze box because it's really only a breathing aid. It's really, you're not going to hear a, a fancy accordion number. Uh, so, so it's just trying to recreate Ginsburg. Uh, 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 sunflower, weary of time, who counts the steps of the sun, seeking after the sweet golden climb, where the traveler's journey is done. Where the youth find the way with desire, and the pale virgin shrouded in snow, arise from their graves and aspire, aspire. Where my sunflower would go, wishes to go. Well, I hope you hear Alan tonight <laughs> through, um, because I, he, you know, after many years of flailing around, it was Ginsburg who taught a lot of us to read these poems, and um, that. I had confirmation of this in on my last trip to Denmark. Uh, a friend, Ip Johansson, who has just translated Blake into Danish, uh, did, did a beautiful job of, of reading and counting. And the breath stops. That, I think, is the key, the breath stops. And thank you for those of who are nodding also. Because this is it, and I hope you will go home and try this with your own diversions. Uh, Blake should be read, not Parson construed. Uh, he should be read out. So um, uh, now to switch to the other sunflower, which is a sutra. A, a stitching of aphorisms, uh, and and this is this is this is Ginsburg's hello boss. You, is everybody? Are you? Do you have a comfortable spot there? Berkeley, 1955, and and this is uh, this is Ginsburg, Sunflower Sutra. I walked on the banks of the Tin Can Banana Dock and sat under the the huge shade of a Southern Pacific locomotive to look at the sunset over the box house hills and cry. Jack Kerouac sat beside me on a busted, rusty iron pole. Companion, we thought the same thoughts of the soul, bleak and blue and sad-eyed, surrounded by the gnarled steel roots of trees of machinery. The oily water on the river mirrored the red sky. Sun sank on, the top, on top of, of final Frisco peaks. No fish in the stream, no hermit in those mounts, just ourselves, roomy-eyed and hung over like old bums on the riverbank, tired and wily. Look at the sunflower, he said. There was a dead gray shadow against the sky, big as a man, sitting dry on top of a pile of ancient sawdust. I rushed up enchanted. It was my first sunflower, memories of Blake, my visions, Harlem, and hills of the eastern rivers, bridges clanking, Joe's greasy sandwiches, dead baby carriages, black treadless tires forgotten and unretreaded, the poem of the riverbank, condoms and pots, 
steel knives, nothing stainless. Only the dank muck and razor-sharp artifacts passing into the past. And the gray sunflower poised against the sunset, crackly, bleak, and dusty with the smut and smog and smoke of olden locomotives in its eye. Corolla of blurry spikes pushed down and broken like a battered crown. Seeds fallen out of its face, soon to be toothless mouth of sunny air. Sun rays obliterated on its hairy head like a dried wire spider web. Leaves stuck out like arms of the stem. Gestures from the sawdust root broke pieces of plaster falling out of the black twigs, a dead fly in its ear. Unholy battered old thing you were, my sunflower. Oh, my soul, I loved you then. The grime was no man's grime, but death and, lo and human locomotives. All that dress of dust, that veil of darkened railroad skin, that smog of cheek, that eyelid of black misery, that sooty hand or phallus or protuberance of artificial, worse than dirt, industrial, modern, all that civilization spotting your crazy golden crown. And those blear thoughts of death and dusty loveless eyes and ends of wood and withered roots below in the home pile of sand and sawdust, rubber dollar bills, skin of machinery, the guts and innards of the weeping coughing car, the empty, lonely tin cans with their rusty tongues alack. What more could I name? The smoked ashes of some cock cigar, the cunts of wheelbarrows and milky breasts of cars, worn out asses of chairs and sphincters of dynamos, all those entangled in your mummied roots, and you there standing before me in the sunset, all your glory in your form. perfect beauty of a sunflower, a perfect, excellent, lovely sunflower, a protuberance, a sweet natural eye to the hip boom, woke up alive and excited, grasping in the sunset shadow, sunrise, golden, monthly bleed, breeze. How many flies buzz around you, innocent of your grime, while you curse the heavens of the railroad and your flower soul? Poor dead flower, when did you forget you were a flower? When did you look at your skin and decide you were an impotent, dirty old locomotive? The ghost of a locomotive, the specter and shade of a once powerful, mad American locomotive. You never were no locomotive, sunflower. You were a sunflower. <laughs> <laughs> and you, locomotive, you are a locomotive. <laughs> Forget me not. So I grabbed up the skeleton thick sunflower and stuck it at my side like a scepter and deliver my sermon to my soul and Jack's soul too and anyone who will listen. We're not the, our skin of grind. We're not red, bleak, dusty, imageless locomotives. We're golden sunflowers inside blessed by our own seed and hairy, naked accomplishment bodies growing into mad black formal sunflowers in the sunset, spied on by our own eyes under the shadow of the mad locomotive riverbank, sunset, Frisco, hilly, tin can, evening sit-down vision. Berkeley, 1955. another prophetic uh, poem of Ginsberg's, one that's not as well known as it should be. Uh, there is a small fan club for this poem. For this poem. It's the Wichita Vortex Sutra. And it was written at the height of the Vietnam War. And uh, it caught my attention because 
my grandfather made the trek from Ellis Island to Wichita. Uh, he had a job waiting for him as a, as a, as a butcher, as a kosher butcher, and, and, uh, and, and, and founded a small congregation there. So, uh, but this is Ginsburg driving across the country giving us the news of the, of the Vietnam War and giving us the news that the American language has been corrupted by war. So a few, a few passages, a few sutrices. I think you should read the, long, the, the whole Wichita Vortex to yourself. A lot of it rattles around well in your head. But I read, read out the parts that I think are prophetic and representative. I'm an old man now. This is Allen Ginsberg, by the way. I'm an old man now and a, and a lonesome man in Kansas, but not afraid to speak my lonesomeness in a car, because not only my lonesomeness, it's ours all over America, oh tender fellows, and spoken lonesomeness is prophecy. Open lonesomeness is prophecy. In the moon a hundred years ago, or in the middle of Kansas now, it's not the vast plains mute our mouths that fill at midnight with ecstatic language when our trembling bodies hold each other breast to breast on a mattress. Not the empty sky that hides the feeling from our faces, nor our skirts and trousers that conceal the body love emanating in a glow of beloved skin. Smooth abdomen down to the hair beneath our legs. It's not a God that bore us that forbid our beat, that forbid our being like a sunny rose, all red with naked joy between our eyes and bellies. Yes, all we do is for this frightened thing we call love, want, and lack. Fear that we aren't the ones whose body could be beloved of all the brides of Kansas City, kissed over by every boy of Wichita. But, oh, but how many in their solitude weep aloud like me on the bridge over the Republican River, almost in tears to know how to speak the right language on the frosty broad road, uphill between highway and bank. I search for the language that is also yours. Almost all our language has been taxed by war. Radio antennae, high tension wires from Junction City across the plains, highway cloverleaf sunk in a vast meadow, lanes curving past Abilene to Denver, filled with old heroes of love, to Wichita, where McClure's mind burst into animal beauty, drunk, getting laid in a car in a neon misted street 15 years ago. And then another part of the sutra. I call all powers of imagination to my side in this auto to make prophecy, all lords of human kingdoms to come. I lift my voice aloud, make mantra of American language now. I hereby declare the end of the war. Let the states tremble. Let the nations weep. Let the nation weep. Let Congress legislate its own delight. Let Congress legislate its own delight. Let the president execute his own desire. This act done by my own voice published to my own senses, blissfully received by my own form, approved with pleasure by my sensations, manifestation of my very thought, accomplished in my own imagination, all realms within my consciousness fulfilled, 60 miles from Wichita, near El Dorado, the golden one, in chill earthly mist, houseless brown farmland plains rolling.
after blizzard, the rock wall oblivious in all the neighborhood, the dry wall oblivious, the storms passed through, no sign of him on this spring day, almighty oh, engineer. Two, O oh, stately Belvedere, thinking of Songus, the long lines all day waiting for the one at home, now the simple display of family photos and family kindness. O oh, stately Belvedere, this was not in a day's work, O oh, mighty engineer. Three, across Route 38. Across Route 38, downtown and around, below the city center, bridges to Songus, before the river, the sprawling highlands, the civic auditorium, blue phallic chimney of the saints, bright, bright blue memorial hospital, and over green river roadways, almighty oh, engineer. Four, ring around the river, along the outer highway, spring along the river. My business is topography, ringing bridges we built. The guard locks passed, the stone walls passed, the mighty canals passed, the baseball diamonds passed, the park lines passed, the cock bridges passed, the hundred tons passed, the Pawtucket Falls rushing, down, the downward waters rushing. Against the restraining locks, the mighty untapped energy, or mighty engineer. Uh, to the services they came, to services they came waiting in line the whole long day. The ones to comfort, the ones not willing, the ones not accepting, no for an answer. The young congressman, sleeves rolled up, ready to work, setting democratic goals, dream vistas democratic, one among many, now the strong incense and the swinging censer and the deep chanting among the gold shining Senator Saunders. Six, thinking of Ginsburg. Thinking of Ginsburg, crocuses at attention, unaware, unaware of battles, the latest blizzard, thinking of Ginsburg, so innocently forming in the dooryard. Blue Silla's group, thinking of Ginsburg. Or downriver, Kestrels take off in their flotillas, thinking of Ginsburg, ejecting one by one over Kerouac Park. Harking the moment, thinking of Ginsburg, the traffic cops marching through low, the local youth, thinking of Ginsburg, the good doctor, dreaming of Patterson, the father and son, thinking of Ginsburg, the Fox Lane, looking down, thinking upriver, under Moody Bridge, thinking of Ginsburg, the jazz men jamming on, the Nate King of Prague Spring, thinking of Ginsburg, the Beat King, chanting, 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 all of Prague, shouting, Ginsburg, Ginsburg, when recalling him in Mechanics Hall, about to read haiku, American sentences to him by W.C. Handy, Kerouac, by Bluesman Burroughs, thinking of Ginsburg, then to hear him reciting W.C. Handy, Blake in his other ear, walked all night from East St. Louis, ain't got a rotten dime, thinking of Ginsburg, the traveling harmonium, the sunflower sutras, thinking of Ginsburg, <coughs> making the scene, the rainbow cafe, Morning doves trying, thinking of Ginsburg, almighty oh, engineer. Seven, then recalling the madness of his mother, ambulance bound, committed, thinking of Ginsburg, the madness of my mother, high on El Dopa, thinking, dreaming, raging, the man in his blue serge suit, excluding no one from the conversation, now beyond all that jazz, fire in the liver's Chernobyl no longer rages, but enrages as the early sutras, engages as the early sutras. Howls, mantras, the middle sutras, frantically delivered, the late visionary loopy language, the illuminations printed on glossy paper. Almighty oh, engineer. Thanks very much. Ah, ah, ah,
flower, weary of time, who countest the steps of the sun, seeking after that sweet golden climb where the traveler's journey is done. Where the youth pines away with desire and the pale virgin shrouded in snow arise from their graves and aspire where my sunflower wishes to go. And from the intro to Bridges to Kerouac, the story of my first illuminated plate, hand lettered on a commercial postcard, a song for the birth of my first child, my daughter. Infant joy and infant sorrow, infant sorrow, infant joy, we will do for you tomorrow what you cannot do today. Infant, infant joy and infant sorrow, parent sorrow, parent joy, we may wish for you tomorrow what we cannot do today. And my response to Ginsburg's Wichita Vortex comes in my heart's ladder, sonnet number 30, a sonnet to a sutra. Pardon, old fathers. Pardon, old fathers, if David, Natalie, and I grieve as we cross New York by subway and Ellis Island ticket. How you fell into the vortex of Fort Devons and all America without knowing how your families would fall free. You did not know when or where the Messiah would come to any more likely place than one not far from where you landed in the wide, broad battery place where yours would encounter the poet prophet Ginsburg who would speak from this sign of sure not just to heal the wounds of unjust wars, but of the whole American language, then taxed by war. And who could have imagined that from, Ellis, that from that Ellis Island point of disembarkation, from Oxford Road's small as beautiful destinations, where but in the battles of Hyde Park friends and Hanscom Field, who would have guessed all the names that would pour forth everlasting Allah, Christ, Nirvana, Buddha, Elohim.
floor Brother death, please mind the store Brother death, please mind the store Old Auntie death, don't hide your bones Old Uncle death, I hear your drones Oh Sister death, how sweet your moans Sister death, how sweet your moans Oh children's death, go breathe your breaths Sobbing breaths, okay, your death Pain is gone, tears take the rest. Tears are gone, take the rest. Genius death, your art is done. Love or death, your body's gone. Father death, I'm coming home. Father death, I'm coming home. School of death, your words are true. Teacher death, I do thank you for inspiring me to sing this blues. Inspiring me to sing this blues. Who to death I wake with you? Come to death, your mind is new. Song of death will work it through. Song of death will work it through. Suffering is what was born. Ignorance made me forlorn. Tearful words I cannot score. Tearful words I cannot score. Father breath, once more farewell. Birth you gave was no thing else. My heart is still, and so time will tell. My heart is still, oh time.